Page nine. So Reggie's stepping up to the plate, hitting a fastball. It's traveling at 36 meters per second. Impact caused the ball to leave his bat with a velocity of 45 meters per second in the opposite direction. Opposite direction means that we're going to have a negative number there. Um, and we know that the impact lasts for 0 0.002 seconds. Um, what's the force that Reggie exerted on the, on the baseball? So we know that um, because we've got a force and we have some sort of change in velocity, we're going to be using an impulse change in momentum formula. Um, we know the, for we know the um, time, sorry, we're solving for the force, but we know the time of impact was 0 0.002 seconds. We know the mass of the baseball. And this is the only part that gets to be a little bit tricky for people, this change in change in velocity. You've got to remember, change in velocity is V final minus initial. Well, the final velocity is the baseball traveling in the opposite direction as the original. So opposite direction would be negative direction. Um, we know the original direction was towards the bat. All right, so if we think of the ball going towards the bat, terrible bat, it looks more like a turd, but uh, whatever. So the bat's being swung at the ball, which means that once this ball hits the bat, it's going to bounce off. It's going to go in the opposite direction of what it was. So this direction would be positive. Opposite direction would be negative. Okay? So that's where that negative's coming from. So V final minus V initial gives me a negative 81, so it makes it even larger. If you reverse the sign on one of these, you're going to come out with a, a, a way different number. You should be canceling some of that out rather than adding the negatives together. All right, um, then we know the mass already. So mass times our change in velocity is negative 12.15. And then the other side of things we can't do anything with, so it's just still 0.002F. And then again, don't think of it as, do I multiply one side by the other, or this side by that side? Think of it as, how do I get F by itself? F's currently being multiplied, so I've got to divide it by whatever it's being multiplied by. Uh, if I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other. That's what algebra tells me I've got to do. And there's more to it than just algebra telling me that I've, I've got to do that. Um, but that's the, the basics. So we end up with a force of negative 6,075 newtons. So what the heck's going on with that negative? Uh, it makes sense because if the ball's traveling this direction, so to the right, then that means that this negative force is a force that's resisting that ball. So it makes sense that it's, it's negative. Otherwise, I don't actually end up striking the ball. Um, if we're jumping on a trampoline and the trampoline pushes us up for 0.8 seconds with a force of 422 newtons, we want to know the, the impulse. Well, we know that impulse is just simply a, a force times a time. Um, our force in this case is 422. Time is 0.8 seconds, so an impulse of 337.6 newton seconds. Um, we want to know the main reason that a trampoline is able to give us such a large push. Well, we've got we're in contact with the trampoline for a really long time. Um, and if we have a, a weight that's in contact or a force that's in contact with the surface for a really long time, we're going to get a large impulse. So think about what the force is coming from. This is my trampoline. It's the person that's pushing down on the trampoline is putting a force into the trampoline. That trampoline has to push the person back up. If it takes a long time to do that, then that force is in contact with the surface for a fairly long time in comparison to something that's in the microseconds or something like that. So I'm going to end up with a pretty pretty large change in momentum um, or a pretty large change in impulse. All right, part C, or part C, sorry, part two, number two. Uh, we've got a car that's traveling at 22 meters a second, crashes into another car. It's crossing an intersection. Um, after the collision, the car reduces its speed to 3 meters per second. What's the impulse? Well, we know that impulse is related to, directly related to, the amount of change in momentum that we have. Um, so there's a few ways that we can work this problem out. Probably the easiest is to just realize, well, I've got... 
um, my change in velocity. It's going 22 meters per second to begin with. That's where this 22 is coming from. Uh, it had it. I had a, another speed of 3 meters per second. So that's my final speed reduces to 3 meters per second, so it reduces to its final speed. What's the impulse exerted by the car if it's got a mass of 1,500 kilograms? Well, we know the mass, and we know that um, impulse is the same thing as FT, so we could actually get rid of FT and just call this I an impulse of negative 28,500 newtons. And what really freaks people out, I know, is saying that impulse is the same thing, or not necessarily the same thing, but it's uh, it causes the same change in momentum. And if our units are different, impulse is in newton seconds, momentum is in kilogram meters per second, like, isn't this, like, not the same? What the heck's going on there? But in reality, it is, because we got to remember what a newton really is. Right? A newton is actually a kilogram meter per second squared, or meter per second per second, um, whereas momentum is measured in kilogram meters per second. Well, kilogram meters per second per second is the same thing as or times seconds is the same thing as getting rid of seconds. I'm left with kilogram meters per second equals kilogram meters per second. We'll go over that again. Um, number three, a man jumps off a, off a building, experiences an impulse of 72 kilogram meters per second. Safety net luckily creates a long time of impact for three seconds. So by having that really long impact time, uh, we can end up reducing the amount of force that's required to get an object to stop. So if a person's jumping out of a burning building, we have that trampoline there. We're able to catch them, end up causing them to take a really long time. Three seconds is a pretty long time to, to change momentum. So that means that our force is going to be really low. 24 newtons, not bad at all. All right, so this is what I was uh, talking about before. We'll redo this. Since I know that impulse is equal to my change in momentum, I've got to remember that force is in newtons, which is really kilogram meters per second per second, kilogram meters per second squared. We know that time is in seconds. We know that mass is in kilograms. We know that change in velocity would end up being in meters per second. So it's actually that the kilogram meters per second per second, one of those seconds cancels with time, time seconds. So we're left with kilogram meters per second equals kilogram meters per second. So that's one way just to look at the units to prove that our impulse is directly related to or is the same as our change in momentum, which is what the whole impulse change in momentum theorem is all about. All right, so let's take a look at how much force the man would feel if he missed the trampoline. That would make the time for him to stop extraordinarily short in comparison. Um, everything else would be the same because he, he's got the same amount of momentum He's, he's going to end up traveling at the same speed. He's the same mass. So what's the what's the big difference? Well, if that time is short, then that means that our, our force is going to be large, um, which is an issue. Right? That means more more room for injury. All right. And then finally, last uh, last real mathy problem of the packet here. I'm going to be taking a look at um, a, a truck changing its momentum. So we know that this truck is 10,000 kilograms. It's driving at 10 meters per second, and then it hits the gas pedal to speed up. The driver pushes the pedal for one and a half seconds. Force of 7,000 newtons causes it to uh, speed up. We want to know what's the, what's the final speed after its acceleration. 
This is a little bit challenging because we do have to remember to distribute somewhere in here. But we know that we're going to use the impulse change in momentum theorem um, because we've got things that are associated with impulse, right? force in seconds, time, I should say. And we know that we've got other things that are associated with momentum, mass, and velocity. I don't know what the final speed is going to be, though, but we can figure that out. So I would say, rather than writing the formula like this, you probably want to break change in momentum, or sorry, change in velocity out to a final velocity minus an initial velocity. So I know the force of the truck's engine. I know the time that it takes to speed up, speeding up for one and a half seconds. I know the mass of the truck, and I know something about velocity. I actually know its um, initial velocity. So it's currently driving at 10 meters per second. We want to know after we put this force into it for a, a period of time, now how, how fast is it going to be going? All right, so I, know, I don't know VF, but I do know VI. So the big thing with this problem, the left-hand side of the equation is just simply 7,000 times 1 and a, one and a half. And the right-hand side, that 10,000 times whatever's in parentheses, that's got to be distributed. So we're going to end up being left over with 10,000 V minus 100,000, because 10,000 times 10 is going to be 100,000. And then from there, we're isolating for V, just like any of the other problems. Get rid of 100,000. If I do it to one side, i got to do it to the other. And then we're going to be left over with 110,500 equals 10,000 V, and we'll get rid of that 10,000. It's currently being multiplied by V, so we got to divide it. Do it to one side, do it to the other. Left with 11.05, and I could take that 11.05, plug it back in to what was being solved for, which is the final speed. So take that final speed, stick it back in there, and both, uh, both sides of the equation should be equal to one another. And this does make sense, the 11.05 meters per second because of what's happening. So I'm currently traveling at 10 meters per second. I'm putting a lot of force into the truck to get it to speed up, but it's fairly heavy. I'm not really getting it to speed up for that long. So it makes sense that I'm not drastically above 10 meters per second for my, for my final velocity. So everything looks like it's pretty good. And of course we could check it just to make sure.